Hello everyone. It's good to have you for the very first session of the War Room uh, Bible Study. Uh, today we're going to look at honest evaluation. Honest evaluation. And before we get started, uh, let's open with prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity, Lord, to, to study your word and to to have those uh, watching the video, Lord, to study along with us. I pray, Lord, you open up our hearts and minds to your word. Help us, Lord, to receive it and help us, Lord, to apply these truths to our lives so that we might be more maturing Christians and be better witnesses for you. Thank you for this wonderful time together, and we ask your blessings upon it. In Jesus' name, amen. Merriam-Webster has defined evaluation as the act or result of evaluating, which includes uh, or involves rather the determination of the value, nature, character, or quality of something or someone. Some synonyms of evaluation are appraisal, assessment, uh, estimate, and judgment. You know, when uh, we look in the mirror, uh, we see our reflection, and when we uh, look into the mirror of God's word, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us our very hearts and our shortcomings. So it's difficult to try to do a self-assessment, if you will, uh, an evaluation of our, our spiritual state, but it, it will be a productive exercise. We'll just all work together. So this is the very first session in our Bible study as we begin our, our Bible study on the war room, and today is honest evaluation. Uh, this week, as we do the evaluation, there's going to be some tough uh, questions, and, we're, and you're going to give some real answers, and there's no right or wrong answer. We just want you to examine your hearts, and I'll examine mine, and this process isn't intended uh, to make you feel ashamed, if you will, instead to reveal those blind spots in our lives and to inspire spiritual growth in each of our lives. The Bible tells us in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 13, 5, it says, test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you yourselves not recognize that Jesus Christ is in you unless you fail the test? So tests are, are important. I was not an overly good student in school, especially in elementary school, and I never really tested well. Oftentimes I could do the work, I could do the assignments, but oftentimes I didn't do well on the aptitude test and that type thing. But uh, we've all gone through spiritual tests. We all go through tests day in and day out. Oftentimes we go through fiery uh, furnaces. But you know, an honest assessment or an evaluation of our spiritual condition. That's the very first step in improving ourselves as we seek God's help to be more like him. And that's what we want to be. This being uh, the, the first part of the year, we're into February now, but we're early part, early in the year. It's a good time to, to begin this journey. So just uh, stay with me. We're going to have several sessions in the weeks ahead. And uh, we welcome you to week one, one, and we hope that you'll you'll follow along each week, each week. And everything we study and everything we do is for God's glory, and He wants us to grow uh, closer to Him and to be more like Him each and every day. We got to take up His cross daily. Is what the, the the goal for each of us should be. One of the most important things we can do in order to grow spiritually is to be truthful and honest about where each of us are in this season of our lives. We have various seasons of our lives that we we go through. This week is about encouraging a self, a uh, if you will, an honest self-evaluation uh, between us and the Lord. This process is intended to discourage us, but to help us to understand and to be better and to inspire us to go to the next level in our spiritual growth and the weeks ahead. So this is going to be an exercise. It won't happen overnight, but it'll it'll be a journey that we're all 
in it together. Let me, we're going to ask a couple of questions. Like I said, no right or wrong answers, but just be honest. This is something most of you have the workbook there. So just uh, look in your workbook and answer. We're going to answer a couple of questions here. The first question, in your opinion, how close are you to God right now with zero being you are freezing cold and far away from God and 10 being you are on fire and extremely close uh, to the Lord? So just be thinking on that. You don't even have to answer that right this second if you want to, but just think on that and pray on that uh, for the next, the next little bit. And on a scale of zero to 10, zero being your cold and indifferent, if you will, toward the Lord, 10 being you have a very close on fire relationship with him. Be honest, be honest with that. Uh, and uh, nobody's going to criticize you at all about that. Another question, uh, answer that one as you, uh, the Lord gives you the input here in the next little bit. Another question regarding our closeness to God, where do you want to be a year from now? It's important that we set goals and things of that nature. So a year from now, if the Lord tarries that long, uh, what would be your motivation? What would be your goal uh, to be on, on a spiritual level? So uh, basically, and regarding your closeness to God a year from now on a scale to zero to 10, zero being your freezing cold, distant from the Lord, 10 being your on fire and close to the Lord. And then you have all the numbers in between on that scale. The next little bit, be praying about uh, that and the, what number you'd like to uh, uh, circle or underline in your book. Okay, just think on those two questions the next little bit and we're going to move on. Are you uh, currently moving at a pace to meet your goal uh, that you, you have one year from now? And what are some major decisions and adjustments that you and I would need to make in order to help us to grow and be more like the Lord in the, in the coming year? We can't be stagnant. We can't uh, stand still. We've got to keep growing. We've got to keep moving in our relationship with the Lord. And uh, we got to pray now that the Lord uh, will give us a renewed hunger, and I know it will give us the grace to help us to seek him more passionately and to grow spiritually, more spiritually, if you will, this coming, this coming year. We need to ask him to use this Bible study on the war room in order to, to be a springboard to a very deeper and closer walk with him. Remember, prayer is a conversation uh, between us and the Lord, and remember that the Bible is his living word. And it can be hard for us to evaluate ourselves. It's a hard exercise and to, to evaluate ourselves accurately. But when we're quizzed by others, it's, it's uh, human nature uh, for us to highlight and maybe exaggerate the, the good and minimize or deny what where we're lacking. And we all lack. We all, we all fall short on any any given day scripture we're going to look at and uh if you want to look at you look at it with me in proverbs chapter uh 21 uh chapter 21 i'm gonna go ahead and read it for the sake of time but you can uh you can pick it up here and just or pause the video if you like and uh, uh catch up with me here in just a minute let's begin with uh, proverbs 21 verse 2 it says every way of a man is right in his own eyes but the lord pondereth the hearts. And then in uh, uh, chapter 30 of Proverbs, chapter 30 of Proverbs, we're going to look at a, one verse there, and that will be uh, verse uh, 12. It says, There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. And then uh, verse 6 in chapter 20, of uh, Proverbs is the scripture that reference I have down for our study. Verse six says, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. We'll brag about how good we are, if you will, but a faithful man who can find. It's a self-evaluation. And we, we just have to say, Lord, help me to look into my heart of hearts. Help me to look into your word. Uh, allow your Holy Spirit to work in me and to show me those places where I'm falling short, those places I need to improve. And I know, Lord, you're going to give me the grace in order 
to grow and be more like you day in and day out. You know, the Apostle Paul, he was once a very prideful, self-righteous a Pharisee, but after he was confronted with the risen Christ, Jesus on, on, on that uh, Damascus road, he experienced the glory of road. He, expe- he uh, it, uh, experienced the glory of God, if you will. And later he called himself the chief of sinners. First Timothy uh, chapter one, verse 15, Paul writes, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So he was the chief of sinners. We're all sinners, all of us. Uh, Romans 3.23 says, all have uh, come short of the glory of God. And as we, really before we get into the study anymore today, I would like to invite you, if you don't feel you've ever experienced a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you have any doubt in your heart now that you've ever put your faith and trust and received him as your savior, I'm going to invite you to do that now. Whosoever will may come, the Bible tells us. All have sinned, we know. We're all sinners. Uh, we know it's by his grace that we're saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 8. So we'd invite you today, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, as the Holy Spirit's convicted your heart and drawed you nigh, I'd invite you today to say, Lord, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. Lord, I ask you now to forgive me my sins. I know that my sins now are under your blood that you shed for me on Calvary's cross. And I ask you, Lord, to come to my heart, come into my life, be my Savior. I want to make you Lord of all my life. And if you've prayed that now, welcome to the kingdom of God. So that's the starting point right there, accepting Christ as your personal Savior. So if you've accepted Christ as your Savior this day, we welcome you to the family of God. If you've already been a Christian for a while, we're going to go ahead and get on back, back with the study. But we want to share that invitation with you before we really get into it any, any farther today. You know, many times our actions are a much better at that indication of where we are spiritually, if you will, than our guesses and opinions. Let's ask some other questions and you can just uh, answer them in your in the next few minutes as a, the Lord gives you the answer. Ask yourself honestly these following questions. How diligently do you seek the Lord and pursue a closer walk with him each day? How much time and effort do you spend in his word and in prayer each week. It's hard sometimes. I've heard many pastors over the years, myself included, said prayer is one of the hardest things to maintain a vital prayer life. So it's very key. Yes, the Bible reading, the Bible study is important as well, and it's difficult to keep a discipline on it oftentimes. But but prayer, a prayer coupled with a Bible study, it's very key. So how how much time and effort do you spend in his word and in prayer each week? A third question, do you make an effort to remember and apply the word of God after you hear it, or you do, or do you usually walk away and forget it? When your pastor preaches a message each and every week, when he preaches God's word, when he gives the altar call, when he gives the charge, if you will, from his message, uh, do you apply those truths to your life, or you just walk away and forget about it? Another question, how quickly do you obey God and Uh, When he tells you to do something, we're his children after all. We're joint heirs with Christ. So as we're as his children, he wants us to grow. And and as his children, when we disobey, he will discipline us. We'll get into that maybe a little bit more in a little while. Another question: When God reveals sin in your life and my life, how quickly do we confess and repent of that sin? We had a gentleman in a church I pastored once and. Anytime he would pray, he would always say this phrase. And he said, and Lord, as we come to your throne of grace, Lord, help us to keep short accounts with you. Uh, We know that once Christ saves us, we're saved. But we're still in a war between our spirit and our flesh. So we're still going to sin. We're still going to fall short. So we need to confess 
our daily sins. We know salvation after we accept it is taken care of. Lord has paid that for us, but his blood will continually cleanse us as we fail him often in our flesh. First John 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me ask you this. If you knew that Jesus was coming back in three days, what changes would you make? What changes uh, would I make? What habits would we have to, to, to break and do away with? Uh, what commands, if you will, would you obey between now and then? Something his word has told us to do and we haven't been doing it. Uh, let's, in the next little bit, we'll ask you and myself as well. We're going to pray now that that God will, will give us the grace, and I know he will, to go ahead and do these things rather than putting them off any longer. Today is a day of salvation, and today is a day as Christians to rededicate our efforts into the Lord, to get closer to him, and to grow in his nurture and admonition. So that today is the day that we need to, to do this. And I'm going to invite you right to, here on the screen. You should see a, a link that you can uh, uh, click on, and I'm going to ask you to do that here in just a, a couple of minutes. Let me get a little bit uh, of water here. The first clip we're going to, the clip we're going to watch this week is going to have uh, Miss Clara, and of course, and it's going to have Elizabeth Jordan, who is a, a played by, of course, uh, uh, Dr. Tony Evans's daughter, if you didn't, uh, Priscilla. But as a, as a group, we're going to take a, a look at the lukewarm coffee. It takes about four minutes. And then we're going to share in a summary. I'm going to share the summary, and then I'm going to invite you to watch the video clip. Elizabeth Jordan, our, our study tells us, is a successful realtor a living in an unsuccessful marriage. She assumes uh, she is doing fine spiritually, but gets unexpectedly tested. A providential encounter with a new client asked her uh, a heart-to-heart -heart question, and that a series of questions, if you will, uh, to help Elizabeth to be more open and honest about where she is spiritually. So I'm going to invite you now to click on uh, the video, and then after you watch the four-minute video, come back and resume uh, the study with, with me. Thank you. All right, it's good to have you back after you viewed the uh, video clip. Uh, let's just ask a couple of questions. What uh, biblical metaphor uh, did Miss uh, Clara use to help Elizabeth evaluate God's place in her life? So that shouldn't be too hard. The Lord used object lessons. In children's sermons, oftentimes the pastor or the youth pastor uses object lessons. And it won't be, it's not too hard to uh, figure out what the object, le the object is. That the metaphor is if you'll just think about it. Secondly, answer the same question Miss Clara uh, posed to Elizabeth. What is one thing about your life right now that you desire to be better? What's one thing you desire to be better? Think about that. And if you feel comfortable doing so, uh, share with the groups. But since we're doing this video, share with uh, your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your friend, uh, perhaps whoever you're sharing this with at home. And have you been praying about this one thing? One thing's important. Paul was a specialist. He said, this one thing I do. So one, one thing, we got to start somewhere, haven't we? And do you, another thing, do you ever feel like uh, fighting, that you're fighting the wrong fight? You often heard that said that, uh, Sometimes often we make uh, molehills in the mountains. Uh, we've often heard it said, or am I, is this a mountain I'm willing to die on? So, so what, uh, what fights are you fighting? Maybe you're fought, fighting the wrong arena. Maybe you're fighting something that's just never going to amount to anything and not going to benefit you. And in your, in your time, answer that question. Well, just what, uh, what are you fighting the wrong fight right now and explain that. And another question, what are some landmines that are present in your life and my life? And are, uh, are there some that you've stepped on recently? I know we've all 
I'm 63, so I've stepped on quite a few in my lifetime. I'm sure you probably have as well. So just answer that question. What are some landmines that you have stepped on? Are there some by God's grace that uh, you have avoided? Praise the Lord. What a wonderful blessing that is. And are there some you fear looming on the landscape of your life? We all go through battles. We all go through difficulties. We all go through fiery furnaces. And things uh, come our way unexpectedly. Oftentimes, we're not, we're not expecting things to come our way, but, but they do. And we just have to look to the Lord and he will help us and his grace will, ab will abound. We're going to look at some more scripture. I'm going to invite you, if you will, to turn over to Revelation chapter 3. Find your place there in Revelation chapter 3 and I'm just going to share a few comments. Uh, the Laodiceans, uh, they prided themselves for having an advanced water system and for their production of ISAB as well as some very uh, priceless uh, uh, cloth that they made. Uh, their cloth was worth its weight in gold or more so. So it was very, very valuable. So they prided themselves on being uh, physically rich. Yet spiritually, the Lord tells them that they were blind and that they were lukewarm and nauseating uh, to him, to our, to our risen Lord. So let's... Uh, in our remaining moments, let's look at that scripture. Let's pick up with verse 14 of Revelation chapter 3. And unto the angel, that's the pastor, and unto the angel of the church of, of, uh, Laod of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true. This is Christ talking there in this red letter. The beginning of the creation of God. It's still red letter. Jesus is talking here in this scripture. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor, and blind, and naked. You know, the Lord really cut to the heart there. Uh, uh, the, the naked, they had all this expensive cloth they made. They prided themselves in their clothing and in the expensive cloth they, uh, uh, they uh, produced. And the Lord, he just cuts right to the heart there and says, you're naked in a spiritual way. Verse 18, chapter 3 of Revelation he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve. Remember, they manufactured eye salve, and that thou mayest see. <clears throat> of course, he's talking about their spiritual eyes, their spiritual eyes. He knew all about their product. They made the eye salve for our physical eyes. But he was talking about their spiritual eyes that were blind. Let's continue with verse 19. And many as I love, I rebuke and chase, and be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So the Laodicean church, the Laodicean church, they were marked by their self-sufficiency self and pride. They were very wealthy. Uh, their city lacked a direct uh, water supply, so they had aqueducts that brought hot and cold water into their into their city. And uh, oftentimes, by the time this water arrived to the city, it was lukewarm, and it contained sometimes some sediments and things of that nature. Hot water, of course, is useful for cleaning and bathing, and of course, cold water was useful for drinking and, and cooling and that type thing. But but lukewarm water, it was 
worthy of little more than a complaint. So the, so the Jesus, Jesus says, you know, your spiritual condition, basically it, it nauseates me. It makes me want to spew you out of my mouth. Those of us that lived out in the country, especially, you remember out in those hot summer days, you had that old water hose laying out there in the sun and it always had to collect a little water in it. And you remember when you would uh, turn on the water <coughs> spigot there on the outside and you get that first drink of water, the cold water hadn't made it quite into the hose yet, had it? It'd be that old uh, lukewarm water. And it, it was nauseating. You'd spit it out. You couldn't, you couldn't really swallow it. And that's the way the Lord was about their spiritual condition. How do our lives slowly become lukewarm and the, and the further we, you know, the further we get from the source of the living water? Are you as, as close to the Lord as you were the first day that you were saved? Hopefully that, that was just, that's important in our salvation, very important of eternal importance. But we're to grow in his grace and knowledge from that day forward and to mature from that day on. What evidence of lukewarmness do you see in believers' lives today? <clears throat> How about your life? <clears throat> Excuse me. How about my life? What are some evidences of lukewarmness where we've fallen short? According to verse 19 we just read today, that was mo motivating Jesus to a harsh rebuke. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chase him. Be zealous, therefore and repent and repent also hebrews 12 verse 6 for whom the lord he the lord loveth <coughs> he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth let me ask you the question you looked at verse 19 with me what are two things jesus said we should do in verse 19 what did he say? Therefore, be zealous and repent. The word zealous, it means to be filled with zeal and affection and love for someone or something. It means to get hot for God again in the context of our study. The word here for repent goes beyond merely feeling bad and regretting, but actually changing our minds and hearts about something resulting in a change of lifestyle and about face if you will. This is hard to do on our own, but can happen with God's help as we rely on him. Jesus invites us into a closer walk and intimate relationship with him today. Let's look at verse 20 one more time. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, boy or girl, woman, if you will, hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, her, and will sup with them, and them with me, he with me. So that includes all of us, of course. So that's the invitation. The image of Christ uh, standing at an open door, at a closed door, actually, uh, is a message for believers who have sinned and have become apathetic in their lives and become prideful. And we, we need to have Christ enthroned on, in our heart, our heart of hearts. Jesus, he desires us to come closer to him he, and for him to take the rightful control that he deserves in our lives. And he wants to rekindle his relationship with us. He, if we feel any distance from God today, he hasn't moved one iota. It's us that has done the moving. So if you feel any more, any distance from the Lord, than you failed in the past. It is us that has moved away from the Lord, not he. He's not moved away, not away from us. What are three specific things in your life and my life in closing that's keeping us from being on fire from God? Just honestly answer that in, in your time. Three things that you think is really uh, roadblocks for you being right with God today. And we invite you now to pray for God to do those three things in your life and ask him to search your heart and my heart and reveal the tr our true condition with him, before him. And uh, uh, we, the Lord will give you the chance to repent and need to repent of that unconfessed sin and be more zealous, if you will, 
as we repent. Let's close with this verse and we'll close with a prayer. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and listen and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. So he offers us redemption. He offers us a second chance. He offers us chances over and over again to get right with him. But as the Holy Spirit moves in your heart and your life today, don't turn a deaf ear. Remember Jesus, yes, he stands at the door and, and knocks, but he's a gentleman. He's not going to kick the door in. The doorknob's on the inside. That's our heart. We have to open the door and let him in. Have you let him into your life today? Have you accepted him as your Savior? If you've been a Christian a long time, are you living for him? Are you on fire for him? Let's close in prayer and pray that we'll all do better in our walk with the Lord. Thank you for this first session, this honest evaluation of our spiritual condition, Lord, as we study through the Bible study in conjunction with the War Room movie. We just pray, Lord, now that you'll help us to examine our hearts and our lives and give, do an honest evaluation as we uh, seek to be more like you and not to be lukewarm, but to be on fire for you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for this time with those watching this video. May you bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, we'll do another study here in a few more days. May the Lord bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye.